don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't ha care how far-fetched it might appear to be, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. I started out, as was indicated by Jack, it's a very humble beginnings. I was born in Miami, Florida, in an area called Liberty City, in an abandoned building on a hard Nanolian floor with my twin brother. We were six weeks of age, we were adopted. When I was in fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade, and stayed in that category until I got out of high school. I don't have any college training, but I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter, follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching, they stop pushing themselves, and they end up becoming very cynical about life, and they throw in the towel on themselves, and on their families, and on their dreams. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you, that in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you could ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you, that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago, in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business, and I fell on some hard times, and I was sleeping in my office. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at it. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. How did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. Here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one, ladies and gentlemen, could have convinced me when I started out just over six years ago that after just over six years, I would have my own book entitled Live Your Dreams. Just over six years, I would have five specials on public television. Just over six years, I've done motivational speaking for... AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, Xerox, IBM, just over six years. I will now have my own talk show that will premiere on Monday, Labor Day. I'm saying to you, your dream is possible. What I'm doing now, I could have been doing years ago. But because I did not have a college education, because I didn't believe in myself, because I allowed other people's opinion of me to control my destiny, I didn't act on my ideas. But it's necessary. 
that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life. People who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. That's necessary. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say, you can count on me and they don't come through. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause we possess, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and saying to yourself, it's not over until I win. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop. Stop running toward your dreams.